Hi, good morning YouTube. This is Dr. Wanda and it's Friday and I'm giving you uh, a Friday chat. So a few weeks ago, I sat down and I did a video and I talked about the men. And so I thought it was only fair that I come back and I talk about the women. Um, one thing that a uh, woman coming from the diaspora, I'm, I'm going to talk about black women coming here, that you have to prepare for is that um, you will not necessarily find the sisterhood that you're used to in the States. So what I mean by that is um, when we care about each other, when we start these um, friendships, we are very um, familiar with each other. So once we decide we're going to be friends, we're very familiar with each other. We laugh, we joke, we we um, take the take the mask off, and we share. And so we're used to you know being able to lean in and giggle about something and have that good inside joke. And um, if I'm your girl and and you shopping and you see two, you pick one up for me. If I'm your girl and uh, we I'm out and and I'm short fifty cents, you throw the fifty cent in. Like there is an exchange in sisterhood, a black woman's friendship that is uh, a standard. So here I am in Africa and the, I would say uh, the majority of my support, if I had to pick a number, I would say 95, 98% of my sister support comes from the U.S. These are friendships. These are relationships that's built through either church or community, former grad students, former high school students, um, commu uh, people from my from my block. These are people that, that have known me throughout time and we're linked on Facebook or through other venues and they just love me and check on me. And I've also put the time in with them. So I've loved them on the terms that I could love them when I could love them. So it, it is cyclical. Okay. It's never one sided, but it's not even, you know, just because one person has given me money doesn't mean that I've given them money. Maybe I've given them time. Maybe I've given them a connection. Maybe I've loved on them, um, given them an ear when they were going through a crisis, but that relationship is sealed solid in sisterhood. And that is sacred. Okay. That's not necessarily a true thing to find here. Even though people call you auntie, they'll call you mom, they'll use very endearing terms with you. It doesn't mean that you actually have built that relationship. So you have to prepare for that. You have to prepare for that level of um, sort of loneliness to just kind of be. And what I mean by be is, you know, when we free with each other, if we let one, if we curse, if we smoke, if we talk crazy, whatever it is we do, we, we completely disrobe with one another and enjoy one another because we live in a world where the black woman and the black man spend an awful lot of time cold switching, cutting it off, speaking the king's English, trying to appear well-behaving or trying to fit in in, in, a, in spaces where it's made clear that we don't fit or we're not wanted or, or um, our brand is not accepted. So, And when I'm speaking, I'm speaking about people who are educated or cultured or well-traveled. I'm speaking about people who come from families where they've been raised, where they understand respect and boundaries. That's the group I'm talking about because that's the group of women that I vibe with. Okay, I'm not talking about about hood chicks. I'm not talking about people that revolve out of the penal system or fight each other or any of this stuff. I'm talking about people who know how to love each other. And they're not necessarily from the same social economic background, but they definitely speak the same language, love, respect, loyalty, um, care. Like this is just built into these women. And so you have to prepare when you live abroad that you may not find that league of women very easily, even though they talk nice, they smile, they're friendly. Now, one thing you need to know immediately is that you are deemed exotic by default, okay? Just by default. You already come into anybody's nation and you're exotic by default. And what I mean by that is I want you to go back to when you were in high school or grammar school and all of a sudden... You know, in every high school or grammar school, there's always girls who are deemed the cutest girl in the school, the finest girl, and all the boys flutter around her. And then a new girl comes to the school, one they haven't seen before, you know, kind of with a different swagger. And so they all kind of migrate over there. That's the effect. You're coming to 
the continent has. So it doesn't mean that you actually are exotic. And it doesn't mean that you see yourself as exotic. But the mere fact you're different, you cause a disturbance among the men. And the women observe that. Okay, so there's a lot of lot more standoffishness with the women because of that, because your mere presence is causing their men to act kind of different. So you already should come with a mindset understanding how men function amongst each other, what happens when there's, when there's a new cat in the room, and you need to um, adjust yourself appropriately so that you're not um, being non -thre you being non threatening, um, but also you still get the right to remain yourself. The other thing is that you have to expect that there's a little bit of frenemy, not friend, but frenemy in the relationships you build. Yes, you'll find a friend, but a lot of it has a little bit of envy in it only because you're able to move and maneuver. You have relationships, networks. You are able to do things that they're not able to do. And sometimes the stuff that they have desperately, these women have desperately wanted to do for a long time. You have to understand this country is made up of 70, 80 percent women entrepreneurs. These women are busting their chops. And even when they're not busting their chops, they have long days where they don't, you know, they, they don't get great relief. So you're not going to go through this country and see um, women getting their feet rubbed and arguing with their man about getting their toenails painted or um, where, you, you know, where you're having all these girls nights. You don't see that. So there's a lot of just lack of TLC. Whereas when you show up, men hold the door. They're being patient with you. They're waiting for you. Um, you'll demand that your hand gets held or that somebody... Um, uh, you know, be, you know, deal with your whole person and your items differently where these women are used to like, Hey, everybody get in and it's the survival of the fittest. So that brings you some friendship, but a little bit of frenemy in it as they observe how you can, how you're treated and how you conduct yourself and what you're able to demand that they're not necessarily able to demand. Okay. And then the, um, the other thing is you have to prepare as a woman even though it's not sexual, you too, amongst the women, are seen as an opportunity. You are an opportunity for network, for potential travel, for um, income, for some type of investment. And uh, listen, and I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with that. I think we all do that, where we're happy to meet people that move in spaces that we've never been or we wish we could go. And we like, wow, I'm linked to her. You know, like you're in the fashion industry or you're, you're, you're a seamstress and you're meeting someone in the fashion industry. You're excited that you'll get that opportunity to like finally meet somebody that's in there. You do music and you meet somebody that like, you know, has their own studio and equipment. Like, yeah, you're excited to move in that space. The difference here is that sometimes the women are narrow with it. Like once they put you in that space, they leave you in that space. They compartmentalize you to that space where they don't see you as someone that they can just call up and chew the fat with and, and check on you and see how you doing and, 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 and giggle with you and share a good, you know, hearty piece of gossip. They, it's very hard to have them see you that way. So, um, if you can stomach that, if you can, if, if that doesn't burden you, then you'll do fine. Now me, I am a professional loner. If I have one friend, I'm usually okay. Okay. I'm usually okay. So how I've dealt with it is most of my, my, um, my deep conversations when I'm really being myself, when I need to pray, when I need to cuss, when I need to fuss, I call a bore. I call abroad. I call and I talk or I text to um, longtime family and friends, people who I know I can be completely myself with. And so that gives me relief. The one friend I thought I had here, that friendship, um, once I came back, it morphed into something else. So we don't have break. We don't break bread. We're not having Triscuits and tea. We're not getting together. We're not giggling together. We're not walking to the beach. And these were all things I thought would be occurring because I felt like I had met what was, you know, for Ghana, my best friend and whatever is the shift or why it shifted. I can't really 
um, attest to that. And, and I, don't, I don't even want to. I just want to make the point that it happened. And then I had to figure out because I'm here living and I'm still a woman and we still need sisters. Like I have my husband, but my husband is not, not a woman friend. Okay. We still need someone to talk to, to confide with, to giggle with, to give advice to, to get advice from, to, to break bread with, to share our moments. That's just how we're designed. So I still needed that. How I get fed from that is those long time relationships. I praise the Lord every day for video chat, for, for audio. Okay. I praise the Lord every day for messenger and the WhatsApp. Okay, sometimes I'm on it and, and it, it'll start acting up and I remind the other person on the other end. No, 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 no. Don't you get mad about this network. There was a time when you could not do this. I am 6,000 miles away from you. And we are able to actually look at each other and say, good morning. You got your cup of coffee and I got mine. We're going to praise the Lord for that. Okay. Anyway, the women are the women like the men are the men. Eventually, with time and good care, great friendships, great relationships emerge. But, but with the women, woman to woman, it's slower and it's more arduous. And you have to prepare for lots of rejection and compartmentalization and the fact that you are not really seen as part of coming from their sisterhood and they relate to each other very differently than they relate to you. Um, I have found sisterhood in Africa one time, and that was in Uganda. And I call that set of women my dream team. But the circumstances were different. I had organized for what I deemed a parent university, where I would get women from the um, from Gaba, from the from the slums of Gaba to Gaba to train me on fishing and cooking and um, uh, farming and dancing, all the authentic stuff. And so we spent so much time together with them and leadership and me as a subordinate that they came to get comfortable with me. And one day they got strong enough to ask me about myself. And once I answered it, and the question was a very good question. At that time, I wasn't married. I had um, been divorced maybe like a couple of years. And so they asked me, you know, what happened with my husband and this, that, the other. And so I openly uh, answered them. And they said, oh, you just like us. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I'm a woman. You know, the, the, the same way uh, you've been broken and, and, and discarded and lied to and cheated on and double dealt. This, the, 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 the Western woman is not exempt from that. Never be fooled. After they knew I was simply a woman, just like them, we had no problems enjoying one another. So um, I know it can exist among African women with black women coming, even though uh, they always feed us this um this lie that we can't have authentic friendships. I'm just telling you that I've, in my experience in Ghana, it has not been uh, as easy as one would um, expect it to be. But also, you know, I have to be truthful about me. I don't, um, I don't necessarily invest deeply there because I am naturally a, a, a loner and I'm a social introvert. So maybe other women work harder and they need those ties. They need those relationships. I'm, this is a cautionary tale. You may feel like you're building them, but you will know. I've been here now since September. No one calls me just to, to chit chat with me and say hello and tell me how their day is going. And no one calls me and tells me a secret or fuss about their boyfriend or ask me, can I meet them so they can talk? That doesn't happen. But it's still happening to me from the U.S. And I'm still serving it back to my people in the U.S. And we're still um, helping each other um, heal and, and flourish and grow and bounce back. Um, the way good friendships always do. So um, that's enough for now. And I'm going to sign out.